Hi everybody, Pastor Scott here. I am standing in the uh, entryway to the church, as you can tell. Uh, steps up to the uh, uh, bell tower and uh, the doors into the sanctuary. And I just wanted to uh, make a little video here, letting you know kind of generally what we would do uh, if we were to be reopening here in the next couple of weeks. Um, to maybe put your mind at ease a little bit if you're a little hesitant on coming back, maybe because you're not quite sure uh, how safe it's going to be. Uh, I totally understand the hesitation to come back just in general. I know that, you know, we've really all been um, locked away in our homes and just coming out every now and then for kind of bare necessities uh, for the last couple of months. So the idea of uh, coming back to, to church and kind of acting like things are normal is uh, something that something that's understandable, uh, understandably um, a little scary. So, um, and that's why, you know, I'm not surprised as we've put feelers out there for who all uh, would be able to come back. Um, not surprised to find out that Roughly half of you uh, want to stay away for for the time being, and roughly half of you want to come back. I'm not surprised at all by that, and I don't fault you for that at all. But I did want to make a, a little video just kind of maybe letting you know uh, what to expect if you were to be coming back uh, soon, so you would know that uh, so that you would know uh, just that we're taking safety seriously. Uh, there are a lot of things that are really still in uh, the works. We're still trying to figure out exactly how we're going to do certain things. Uh, but it's a conversation that's continuing on, and we really are still waiting on the governor to give us some more clear directives. He has um, disappointingly not given any more direction since his kind of vague statements last week, and um, and so we're still we're still waiting. We're just still waiting to hear, and uh, the hope is that in the next couple of weeks we'll be able to do a uh, soft reopen. Um, so if you were to come in uh, through the uh, main doors right here, um, and then start heading toward the, uh, the doors of the sanctuary. Uh, these would be open, and uh, it's probably realistic that we would have one person standing uh, here at the steps wearing a mask with a, uh, with a hand sanitizer dispenser, and uh, you'd be able to come in, have your hand sanitized, uh, if the governor tells us that we have to be uh, doing contactless temperature uh, taking using contactless thermometers, um, then that would uh, happen, I, I assume, right here by the door. And uh, so we would just make sure that everybody's healthy whenever they're coming in the building. And uh, if you're not, if you have a temperature, we'd probably have to um, ask you to leave uh, for the sake of the safety of everybody else. And I think the Bob Sosha has already looked into um, getting one of those uh, thermometers. So that's kind of already in the works. But thermometers, hand sanitizers, um, not we haven't really discussed yet if we would have masks or not available. I'm pretty sure that everybody has masks, uh, but we probably uh, we're we're going to be looking into that and making sure that uh, that anybody who comes in here uh, would have masks. I already have a I have a huge stack of them at the house, and it would just be easy for uh, me to bring them down. They're unopened. Uh, I have a big stack that's unopened, so it'd be easy to bring them down and use those on a Sunday, um, and then we would order more after that. So you would come in to the sanctuary and um, what you would find as you look around as you look at all the uh, different pews uh, which you would not find right now but what you would find then is that there would be bulletins sitting on the pews in different spots that are strategically distanced from one another so that everybody has six feet between them as they're sitting uh, in the sanctuary. Um, so that way you don't take your bulletin off of a stack of bulletins and nobody hands you one, but it would already be in position um, on the pew and you would sit down, have your bulletin, and you would be guaranteed to be sitting six feet away uh, from another individual. If you're coming as a couple, then you'd be able to sit with your, um, sit with your significant other, your, your husband or wife, excuse me, and, um, and then you would be just the two of you distanced from uh, the next group of uh, the next couple or the next uh, individual uh, by a space of six feet. So you wouldn't, again, you wouldn't have to, you know, take a bulletin from anybody. You wouldn't have to touch a stack. It would already be on the pew uh, for you. And you would just find a spot and you would sit there and we would ask you to stay there. Regarding the uh, air conditioning units, uh, I know Bob Sosha has already been uh, looking into 
uh, redirecting the blower on the units so that they don't blow down onto people sitting in the pews and thus blow by them taking your germs to somebody else or taking somebody else's germs to you, but rather they would be blowing straight out and thus filling sort of like the upper area of the uh, air in here with the cold air and then it's going to move its way down because heat rises. Um, so that way, you know, that, that would control just the amount of, of uh, air speed in the sanctuary here. And uh, that was, was Bob's idea to do that. I thought it was a fantastic idea just to try to try to curb against um, try to curb against the the quick movement of air and taking again, you know, other people's germs uh, to other people. So that being said, that's that's what you would expect in here because of the fact that uh, there would still be a lot of people uh, who wouldn't be coming yet. We're probably going to be looking into live streaming our service. Uh, so that you can watch it from home, and because of that, we wouldn't have the uh, the uh, the tripod uh, for the cell phone recording right in front of the pulpit like we do right now. But we'd probably have to move it back a little bit and maybe like move it toward the middle of the room or something like that, and get some kind of cord extension uh, or uh, something like that. But we would be recording while we're meeting. Uh, we would probably have music. We'll be singing songs with our masks, but we will be singing, uh, asking people to sing quietly, not loud, not pushing out a lot of air, but doing it, doing it quietly. Donna has already agreed to uh, to play the piano, and I would be leading a hymn. Uh, probably do a couple of hymns, two or three or something like that. Again, singing quietly, probably leaning heavily on Donna's accompaniment, but then filling in with the words. Uh, fairly quietly. And um, and so that's what you would expect in here. And then finally, let me see here. Let's go through here into the Sunday school room. We would have probably ush an usher, somebody standing either at this door or at this door right here to guarantee that this space never gets filled with more than one person. Uh, that way you're you know you're not getting close to anybody in this little corridor right here but that only one person's walking through at a time and the reason uh, the reason why I wanted to end uh, in here bear with me here just a sec the reason I want to end in here is because we would actually be utilizing the Sunday school space and turning around six chairs probably stacking up all the chairs moving them out of the way and turning around somewhere between maybe six and ten chairs so that you could then be in here with those stained glass windows open like that one is right there um, and enjoy the service from in here. Um, that way we can fit more people. Um, what that would do is we, we were calculating using distancing in here. We could probably get between six and ten people. And then in the sanctuary space, we can get probably some probably 34, 35 people. So we'd be able to get toward 40 people uh, in the building on a Sunday morning, utilizing the Sunday school room and the sanctuary. Uh, but everything is going to be as safe as we can possibly make it. Distancing will be practiced. Um, we expect that everybody will have masks, we'll have sanitizers, the air won't be blowing on you. We'll just be very careful with everything. And um, a lot of these things are still a work in progress, as you can tell with how I'm, I, there probably are details that I'm leaving out, but I'm kind of doing this off the cuff based on conversations that I've had with um, the deacons and with uh, Bob representing the trustees. Um, but this is kind of where we stand right now. Uh, some things, again, we're still waiting on directives from the state um, to know when we can reopen and when we know we will then start to be able to put some definite plans in place for reopening. Um, it is likely that uh, given, well, okay, um, given the amount of people, waiting on the amount of people who we expect to have back on a Sunday, we might be running two services to try to accommodate everybody. If it's over 40, there's a good chance that we're going to be doing two, and that would probably be at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, um, leaving us a significant amount of time in between to clean everything. If it's around 40, then we might be able to just do one service. Um, but I just want you to know, don't let that be a hindrance to you. If you would like to come back, we want to have you come back uh, immediately. I have no problem doing two services. Um, and uh, most of the people who would be involved, we're already talking about that as well. Um, and so that's a continuing conversation. 
Um, so any questions that you have, you know, let me know. Uh, talk to me, message me, call me, whatever you want to do. And I just want you to know that we're, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back to meeting just as much as you are. I miss it. Um, I'm kind of tired of doing church on Saturdays in the sanctuary with just George and I recording the sermon. Uh, as much fun as he and I are having doing that, yet I think it'd be more fun having everybody in the space with us. So just be praying that we can get back to meeting soon. Pray that the numbers continue to go down in the state um, and pray that the Lord would soften the governor's heart to um, open things back up. And in light of the fact that protests were just happening earlier this week in our state, and yet that seemed to be okay with all these groups of people all together, churches should be able to meet uh, again soon. Uh, pray pray to that end that we can get back to meeting in the next couple of weeks, because uh, that's, that's what I want to see happen. I know it's what you want to see happen. And uh, ultimately, ultimately, it seems like it would glorify God most. And uh, if it's not, if that's not the case, if, if we're not able to meet, we'll continue to just glorify God remotely. And I uh, miss you all, and uh, Lord bless you. We'll talk to you soon.